So this is an immigrant story. This is a family story. This is the classic Americana story. Pittsburgh and the Depression famously was a place so dirty, so rough, so polluted. And from this emerges this incredible young man. He really knew where he wanted to be, and he went after that from a very, very young age. When people think about Warhol, they think about this kind of very blank persona, sunglasses on, monosyllabic, kind of shut down in a way, but really it was kind of the antithesis of who he really was. There was a frailty to him, but on the other hand, there was an incredible resilience. He was deeply rooted in an immigrant experience. He was deeply rooted in a spiritual Catholic experience. And as he grew up in this very poor family, there were these brands around him, Campbell's Soup, Coca-Cola. There's nothing cynical about Warhol mixing together brands, commerce, and also spirituality, which is something that people don't think of when they think about Warhol. I think Warhol had a really early understanding of how culture was shifting in post-war America into this idea of a consumerist culture, and not just in products, but with people, you know, and the idea of consuming celebrities. I think he always saw the, the boundaries and wanted to see how far he could take the work. He did that with his, his own image, you know? He did that with his sexuality, too. What Warhol was doing was painting a portrait of America. Cadillac, of course, is one of those iconic American brands. Some of the artworks we have featuring the Cadillacs it actually come from a commission, and the commission is from Harper's Bazaar, an issue from 1962. The way that Cadillac is moving to sort of embrace all of these different aspects of a creative life or creative expression. I think Warhol would have loved that. I would describe the Cadillac House exhibition as a really poetic gesture of looking into Andy Warhol that museums are not able to. A lot of the objects are rarely seen, rarely loaned. What I love about the selection of letters we have for this exhibition is that it really shows different parts of Warhol's world. The letter that I love most is the letter from Yves Saint Laurent. It almost looks like a haiku, the way each line is written. There were rumors going around the art world that Yves Saint Laurent hated his portrait. And this apparently was making Warhol crazy. The letter from Mick Jagger in 1969. The rejection letter from MoMA. Letters to Truman Capote. Warhol understood that we live in this sort of complete expression of art in so many different ways with music and fashion and glamour. Nothing was off limits for him. It's ripping away the veil of all of this snobbery about fine art. Warhol capturing an iconic brand like Cadillac was really important because it spoke of the moment but also of the future. 